Here's a fun fact. Did you know that Ben and I actually used to be like biker people? Like that we actually rode and owned Harley Davidson motorcycles and that we attended the Sturgis bike rally three years in a row together? <laughs> In the last five years, we have finally been to all 48 states in our RV. And why we still have many more areas in this country to explore, in this video, we're gonna talk about our top 10 places that you're gonna want to put on your list. Now, these are all places that we would visit again in a heartbeat because, well, they're just so awesome. So this is a video that you might want to come back to or share with a friend that you know that's considering buying an RV or just an RV trip. So first off on the list is Zion National Park in Utah. Now, this is an amazing national park with impressive sandstone cliffs and narrow canyons. Zion provides a dramatic backdrop for camping adventures. Now, this park's unique geography makes for some stunning hiking trails. If you want to do some of the bucket list hikes, such as Angel's Landing, you're actually going to need a permit, which can be obtained on the National Park website. And be aware, that particular hike is not necessarily a family-friendly hike for younger children. However, we did go on a hike through the Narrows, and a hike through the Narrows requires hiking through what's called the Virgin River. Now, you're going to get your feet wet, because there's no trail. <laughs> and most people choose to start their hike from the Temple of Sinawava via the Riverside Walk, which is what we did, and then walk upstream before turning around and hiking back down to the Temple of Sinawava. Now we did do this hike with our kids who were fairly young at the time. Now one tip here is if you do this, rent the boots, neoprene socks, and walking stick from the local outfitters in town first. We really wish that we would have done that. <laughs> now, we did stay in the National Park Campground, which was called Watchman Campground, which does have a 40-foot length limit. So if you have a rig longer than 40 feet, you're going to want to opt for a campground in the nearby town of Springdale, Utah. But the campground at Watchman does book up fairly quickly. So if you are planning on this trip, you definitely want to jump on those reservations pretty early. Now, number two on the list is one of my favorites, Mackinac Island in Michigan. Now, Mackinac Island is on Lake Huron in Michigan, and it is a unique destination known for its historic charm and natural beauty and car-free environment. I would say it is a must visit, whether you're an RV enthusiast or not. Now, there are several campgrounds in the Mackinac City area, which is probably where you're going to want to stay to be close in proximity to the ferry terminals. We stayed in St. Ignace at the Tiki RV Park, and it had a lakeside view. I'll actually put a link in the description below for that RV park because it was great. Now, a couple of things to know about Mackinac. It's a car-free environment, so motor vehicles are actually banned on the island, really anything motorized. And transportation is limited to bicycles, horse-drawn carriages, and walking. There's a lot of historic sites. The island's super rich in history. There's sites like Fort Mackinac and Mackinac Island State Park. And why the island is open year-round, a lot of businesses operate seasonally, mainly May to October. Think about it. Michigan in the winter, probably not on the top 10 list on that. Some things to do, you can rent a bike or bring a bike with you. We opted to rent bikes versus having to get them on and off of the ferry and explore the island's scenic perimeter road, which is amazing and offers some stunning views of Lake Huron. You can take a horseback ride, and so there's guided tours, or you can rent a carriage to experience the island in kind of a more traditional way. Definitely check out Fort Mackinac while you're there. Explore the well-preserved fort from the American Revolutionary War area. And sometimes they have reenactments and then, of course, educational exhibits. And then with Mackinac Island State Park, over 80% of the island is actually state park territory. So there's things like hiking trails, natural landmarks, and just really some breathtaking photo ops. And the fudge. So Mackinac Island is famous for its fudge. So visiting the numerous fudge shops and tasting the fudge is definitely a must-do activity. And because it's on the lake, you can actually do some water activities. If that is something you're interested in, kayaking, sailing, fishing, it is all available. Plus some great dining and some fun shops with just unique local products and delicious food. So it's definitely one of the standout places that we've been and we would go back in a heartbeat. And interestingly enough, I actually just got my new copy of the RV Destinations magazine and there's a great article on visiting Mackinac Island in this magazine. In fact, I was a little envious because the photos 
in this particular edition of RV Destinations were way better than some of the photos I took when we visited Mackinac. And one of the things I love about RV Destinations is it covers not only well-known destinations, but also some great hidden gems and places that you've probably not yet heard of. And if you've not heard of RV Destinations, let me be the first to tell you how much I really am loving this magazine. From breathtaking landscapes to thrilling adventures across the U.S. and Canada, I love the inspiration that this is sparking for us of places to go visit and see that we haven't been yet. And RV Destinations magazine brings you everything from the grandeur of national parks to the quaint charm of small towns with those hidden gems. The best part is you can enjoy RV Destinations in both digital and print formats. I know I'm like old school and like to actually have print copies of books and magazines while I sit and read while Ben likes using his iPad or e-reader. So we can both read RV destinations in the format we like. And there is just something about a publication that's written by RVers for RVers that really helps provide some of the best tips recommendations and insights for those of us living this lifestyle. RV Destinations magazine features limited advertising, which means more stunning images and captivating stories from cover to cover, plus insider tips, campground reviews, and recommendations. For a limited time, you can save 20% off your subscription at gratefulglamper.com forward slash RV destinations or at the link below and use the code grateful20 and a huge thanks to RV Destinations for sponsoring this video and their support of our channel. Now, number three on the list is Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming. Mom, this water's getting sucked down too. Is it? Yeah, whoa. Ooh. There it is. Yay. And as America's first national park, Yellowstone boasts incredible geothermal features and a vast array of wildlife. And while there is some camping inside the national park, five of the 12 campgrounds have RV length limits of 35 feet or less. So a great alternative if you have a longer RV or would just prefer to be outside of the national park is a little known place called Rainbow Point Campground in West Yellowstone. And this is where we stayed when we went. This campground's in the national forest, so it's still very reasonable cost. It does have electrical hookups and a water spigot in the campground, and it's a place we would visit again in a heartbeat. The campground at night is super quiet and it's really close to a nearby lake. It's just absolutely gorgeous and I would love to go back. Number four on the list is Glacier National Park in Montana. Now the going to the sun road is a must see for any visitor. Now this is not a road you want to drive in your RV or towing your RV. If your RV is the only vehicle that you have to travel in, you'll want to take the red bus tour or drive your tow vehicle that you have with you. Now, the best time to visit Glacier National Park in an RV is from late May to early September when they're going to the Sun Road is fully open. Sometimes the snow, even in May, will close this road. So you'll want to make reservations here as soon as possible, especially if you want to stay at one of the campgrounds inside of the National Park. Also know that this campground, a lot of the campgrounds inside the National Park do have length limits. However, a lot of them will accommodate RVs up to 40 feet. We've kind of found that to be like the magic number for a lot of national park campgrounds. So be sure to check the national park website for details on that specific campground. There are a lot of hiking opportunities and a lot of hikes inside a glacier are more advanced than others. So be sure to check the map provided by the National Park Service or use an app like All Trails to see specifics on those different hikes. If you've got younger kiddos in tow, make sure you take advantage of the Junior Ranger program at the National Park. As a Junior Ranger, I pledge to help protect and preserve Glacier National Park. Now, number five on the list, New York City, New York. Now, if you are not a fan of the big city, this might not be your cup of tea. And this would also be a great time to mention that in this video, we've got it all divided up into chapters. So you can easily go to the next chapter in the video if you're more interested in a different destination. Now, if you ask our kids, what is the one place you would love to visit again? They would tell you New York City is right at the top of the list. And then there's one other place that they're gonna tell you that they would love to go back to over and over. And I'll talk about that just a little bit later in the video. Now you're probably thinking, how can you take a large RV to New York City? Well, there are actually some campgrounds very close to New York City. And we stayed at Liberty Harbor RV Park in Jersey City. Now this campground was only five blocks from the PATH system, which is the subway system on the New Jersey side. And we walked from our campground to jump onto the PATH and it was only a 10 to 15 minute ride into New York City. Now there are so many things to do and see when in the NYC, 
One tip when you're visiting a large city like New York is instead of doing like a food tour or a bus tour, try a walking tour. We love these types of tours and you learn a ton from your tour guides and it's very cost effective and it's a great way to get some exercise as well. Now, number seven on the list is Mount Rushmore in South Dakota. Now, the Black Hills of South Dakota are actually where Ben was born and raised. Here's a fun fact. Did you know that Ben and I actually used to be like biker people? Like that we actually rode and owned Harley Davidson motorcycles and that we attended the Sturge Spike Rally three years in a row together? <laughs> That was all of our pre-kid days, of course, but the Black Hills and Mount Rushmore area of South Dakota are a family favorite. And we love staying at the Mount Rushmore KOA at Palmer Gulch Resort. And we've actually been staying here long before we even got our RV and after we started RVing as well. This campground's the second largest KOA in all of the US and it is a must experience, especially if you've got kiddos. From the multiple swimming pools to four wheeling and horseback riding, you can spend several days enjoying the beauty of the national forest without even leaving the campground. Then of course there is Mount Rushmore and the town of Keystone, which has some great restaurants and shops. So we are here in South Dakota at Keystone and uh, we're just looking at the weather right now. It looks like it's gonna dump on us, like literally rain on us. Like that. Number eight on the list is where our kids would tell you that they would love to go back and visit again also. And that is Washington, D.C. Hit them off. Hit them off. Yep. And you're going to like it because it has the biggest menu you've ever seen in your life. Now, there are not many campgrounds in the D.C. area proper, so you do have to stay on the outskirts of the city. However, two campgrounds are really your best options, and that is Capital KOA, or Cherry Hill Campground. They're both in Maryland. Now these are both campgrounds. They're both pretty much the same cost and they both offer a shuttle service. So you can opt to drive to the nearest metro station and then ride the metro in the rest way of the DC area or use their shuttle service. You can easily access pretty much all of the musty places in Washington DC using the metro or there's also hop on hop off buses. Number nine on the list, Rocky Mountain National Park and Estes Park, Colorado. With its stunning alpine landscapes, abundant wildlife, in fact, elk crossings are very frequent. <laughs> Camping in the Rockies is definitely an unforgettable experience, but be aware most of the campgrounds inside of the national park are tent only campgrounds, which means if you have an RV, you probably want to opt for some of the RV campgrounds in the Estes Park area. There's also several RV campgrounds at the mouth of the Highway 34 Canyon going up to Estes Park and Rocky Mountain National Park in nearby Loveland, Colorado. A must do in the Estes Park area is driving Highway 7, which is also known as the Peak to Peak Highway. And if you're adventurous and in good shape, you can hike one of Colorado's 58 14ers, Long's Peak. Now, in case you're not familiar with what a 14er is, Colorado boasts 58 peaks that reach 14,000 feet in elevation. And the trailhead for Long's Peak, one of those 14ers, is just right down the road from Estes Park. But if hiking isn't necessarily your idea of a good time, check out some of the quaint shops and restaurants. And we highly recommend Penelope's for a great burger in Estes Park. Number 10 on the list is Pacific Dunes Ranch in Oceano, California. Now this is actually a Thousand Trails campground and this is one of the most unique resorts in California's Pismo Beach region with the rolling sand dunes and waves in the beautiful Oceana Preserve. At Pacific Dunes Ranch, there's an RV resort that highlights breathtaking vistas and then trails to the beach. And in California, it's a winning combination because it's secluded and quiet, but not too remote. And if you're a Thousand Trails member, you can use your membership to stay for even cheaper. Now that you've taken a look at some of the best campgrounds, here's a video about the worst campground we ever stayed at. 